Okay, now this one is gonna fucking blow your mind, I promise you. Holy shit, what the fuck is going on? What are they lying to us about? What else are they lying to us about? Oh my gosh. This is the conspiracy that will change your life. A few weeks ago, I threw a conspiracy theory night with some friends. As I was researching different conspiracies, I came across what I thought was the dumbest one of them all. Birds aren't real. I thought, are you kidding me? Of course birds are real. But the more I started to look into it, the more it drew me in and the more convinced I became. The theory is that since the 1970s, the government has been replacing birds with bird drones to spy on us. There is a staggering amount of evidence to support this. And by the end of this documentary, you will also be convinced that birds aren't real. Have you ever seen a baby pigeon? Ever? You probably haven't because they don't exist. But if they did exist, surely someone has seen a baby pigeon, right? So we decided to go to the streets to find out for ourselves. Have you ever seen a baby pigeon? No. Have any of you seen a baby pigeon ever? No. I don't think so. <laughs> I have not, no. Have you ever seen a baby pigeon? Actually, I haven't. Um, that is kind of sketchy now that I think about it. Have you ever seen a baby pigeon? No, no, I have not. You know, I've wondered about that too. Have you ever seen a baby pigeon before? I don't know. I don't think I have, actually. Have you ever seen a baby pigeon? Yes, I have. Yeah. In Bangkok. On the porch. On, on the balcony. Do you, by chance, work for the government? Yes, I do. Coincidence? But that's not the only unsettling question. In fact, there are a whole slew of questions that don't seem to have any answers. For example, have you ever been successful at touching a wild bird? Of course you haven't. Every time you go up to touch one, it flies away. So obviously the government doesn't want you touching their high-tech drones. When I go out in public, if I see a bird, I'll just freeze. And I can tell, it's an experiment I've done. They will just watch. They don't fly away very often if you stay far away from them because they need as much data as possible. They only fly away when it's important to preserve the bird technology. So I will either freeze or I will run at the birds as fast as I can. And it, it pretty much keeps them away. They either, if I freeze long enough, the government will realize I'm not giving them anything, the birds will fly away. If I run at them, the government will realize I'm a danger to their bird program, and they fly away. That's how we should be living our lives. I feel so much more liberated now. I, I spend hours screaming at birds, and uh, I really have never been happier. I'm a videographer and I fly drones, but several times when I'm flying, I'll have a bird swoop down and try to attack my drone. This is because drones are the only instruments that we have that are capable of reaching the height of birds and spying on them. And obviously the government doesn't want our drones spying on their drones. If you were to drop a feather, how fast would it fall? Relatively slow, right? But what if we were to throw a feather, just chuck it at the ground as hard as you can? How fast would it fall? Still doesn't go very fast. The fastest animal in the world is the peregrine falcon, which can dive at up to speeds of 240 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. But you know, we can throw things pretty fast too, right? So I looked up the fastest baseball pitch and it was clocked in at 105.1 miles an hour. So you're telling me that something made of feathers can go more than twice as fast as the fastest baseball pitch in the world and say that it hasn't been mechanically engineered by the government, that it doesn't have a jet propulsion system? You gotta be kidding me. See this? You know what it smells like? It smells like lies. Starting in the 1970s, birds were disappearing in mass numbers and people immediately began to speculate that the government was getting rid of them and replacing them with bird drones. So we see a dip in population in the 1970s and then it slowly started recovering. Have you ever seen a pigeon outside of the city? You will never see a pigeon in a forest. And, and this makes sense because pigeons didn't actually exist before cities were built. We think we're so smart. As humans, we put tape over our laptop cameras because we don't want the government watching us, but yet we neglect to pay attention to the birds watching us right outside of our windows. We think we're so smart, we say, I'm not gonna buy an Amazon Alexa because I don't want the government listening in on me, but then we buy birds as pets. How much stupider can we get? I once went over to a friend's house and they had just gotten a pet, and here I am thinking it's a cat or a dog, which heaven knows maybe the government's planning on replacing those too, but 
I had to leave the second I saw that it was just a little tweeter bird, and I haven't talked to them ever since. As far as my personal experience with birds, I, uh, it's a little hard for me to talk about. Uh, I had a bird. I had a bird in my house as a kid, my first pet. And, uh, I never knew. The whole time I never knew. Now that I look back on it, I'm like, unless it was like closing its eyes, uploading at night, it was watching. Every time I walked in the room, it looked at me. Every time I walked out of the room, it looked at me. It's a personal vendetta for me against the bird program because they made me love what I should hate. And when it died, I realized that I just had to throw it in the fireplace, move on with my life. But I'm not gonna forgive him for that. So why do we have pet birds? This one is interesting because there are only certain species that, that the government allows you to have as pets. The government? <laughs> allows you to have as pets if, if it's not clear as day. These birds are, are, are in the home because the home is the place people feel safe. You know, outside you can be judged for what you say, but in your home you can say anything that you want. The government wants to know about that as well. So I think it's, it's listening in our most intimate of moments, in our families together. They want to know everything about us, and they can do that in our homes. I mean, these things talk. You're, you're, you're supposed to make me believe that there's an animal that we willingly let into our home that also can talk? It's ridiculous. But I too believed that birds were real. And that's why I'm here to try to convince other people of the reality. It's not a victimless crime. That bird was my friend. What kind of sadistic programming do they have where you reach up and it hops on your finger with its little feet. It just looks at you, it'll eat little things. Or should I say, collect samples as you feed them. I cared about that bird. It didn't care about me. But they made me think it did. How can you forgive something like that? I didn't have other friends. The bird was my only friend for years of my life. The government's super smart. They have mechanically engineered uh, pet birds to make them look cute, adorable, fluffy. You see, you know, pictures and videos online all the time of these pet birds doing funny things, saying funny things, dancing, bobbing their heads. But obviously that's just a government tactic to try to soothe us into thinking that there's nothing wrong here, that these are just like any other normal, cute animal. But in reality, we don't know what these birds are doing when we're sleeping. We don't know the conversations that they're listening in on. We don't know how they're observing us when we walk around our house. The government already has a ton of data from us, from use of social media, uh, the websites that we visit. But in addition to that, having a literal government drone as a pet bird, it now knows everything about you. Have you ever tried to win in a fight against a bird? Two countries have declared war on birds, and they both lost. The first was Australia. They had what was known as the Emu War, where they tried killing off all the emus, even using guns. But their attempts were unsuccessful. The emu population persisted, and they won. The next country who declared war on birds was China. Years ago, Mao Zedong, who was the former president of China, ordered all the sparrows to be killed. After a few years, the insect population had grown so much that locusts and grasshoppers and other insects descended on China's crops by the millions. Mao realized his mistake and called a halt to the war on sparrows, but the damage had already been done. Without the birds, China found itself powerless against the insects. So here's a map of the world showing the countries who haven't declared war on birds versus the countries who have declared war on birds and who have lost. The worst kind of bird is the hummingbird. The reason is that they look so cute on the surface, but that is just clever exterior design for the drones. The problem is, is that they fly so fast and so silently that you can't tell when they're about to dive bomb. Are birds weaponizable? They're basically swords with wings that stab you in your heart emotionally. I haven't seen evidence of it physically, but emotionally, they get you. They're, they're weapons. Take hummingbirds, for example. Beak needles. I've called them beetles. When people get confused, and I'm like, don't. Don't. It's a beak needle. What do you think it's gonna be? What they don't realize is that these hummingbird needles can inject anything 
Some people believe in anti-vaxxer dogma and they don't realize that it's not going to be a mandate from the government that forces them to get vaccinated. It's gonna be hummingbirds. I don't know, I think birds might be real. I'm telling you, if you order a thermostat water heater, I will earn 0.8 yuan from you. You heard it right, I am the owner of this factory. I do business with integrity. All these water heaters are sold directly from the factory. Without any intermediary profiting. What are you waiting on? Click the link below now to make a purchase. Cash on delivery, cash on delivery, cash on delivery. Inspect and pay only if satisfied upon delivery. If you are not satisfied, you can return it without spending a penny. We are confident in the quality, and you don't have to spend a penny. I wouldn't tell you if you didn't ask. This is too amazing, the effect is too obvious. Where did you get it? I don't want to buy it either, but it's really cheap. The product is great, and the free gift is as well. What is the animal that is the most illegal to kill in the United States? It's illegal to kill the bald eagle because they are the most expensive government drone and extremely difficult to replace. They say that eagles can spot a mouse running from hundreds of feet in the air. Well, that just sounds vaguely similar to the SR-71 Blackbird that uses telephoto lenses to take pictures from miles in the air. Obviously, they're using the same technology. Someone got video evidence of a man trying to kidnap a bird drone, and this is what happened. What does bird even stand for? Obviously, it stands for Bureaucratic Intelligence Reconnaissance Drones. Did you know that when an owl flies, it is almost completely silent? Any sound is practically indistinguishable. How much stealthier can a government drone be? Each type of bird drone has a different purpose. Pigeons do city surveillance, vultures are in charge of public sanitation, owls do night surveillance, hummingbirds are attack drones, seagulls do coastal surveillance, hawks are the regional alphas, ravens are stealth attack drones, and parrots are obviously linguistics analysts. Something that is quite concerning is that we, we don't yet know what all the types of birds are used for. Uh, we, know, we know a couple of them, but ostriches, for example very different in design from other birds. We currently have no idea what the purpose of an ostrich is. Is it in preparation for some sort of war? For some sort of takeover? Is it specifically location-based? I mean, some of these things are taller than people are and can run many times faster than us. Flamingos, they're pink. They sit around eating shrimp all day, but they have this ridiculously huge beak that looks suspiciously like it could be a weapon. I mean, we just don't know what some of these are and that's incredibly concerning and and those are some of the things that we will be investigating as we move forward <laughs> and as people kind of catch on to this we hope to uncover those mysteries as well what worries me most is if they could do it with birds they could do it with anything the scary thing is that this bird drone technology is increasing the newest models of birds have 360 degree vision and even know how to dismantle anti-spy equipment did you know that when a bird sleeps it doesn't fall over do you know of any other two-legged creature that can sleep standing up? Could you sleep standing on two legs? What other animal do you know that can sleep standing on only two legs? Nothing, because they aren't actually sleeping. This is the sound that R2-D2 makes. And this is the sound that a bird makes. Coincidence? As far as how the mechanics work for birds, think about this, okay? So, this is like, what's this? Robot. Robot, right? Now, you know what? These guys are truthers, okay? They're truth seekers, because his shirt says, Pluto, it's covered up, never forget. Now, Pluto, you know, NASA said it was a planet for all these years, and then all of a sudden they say, it's not a planet now. So that's, this person is letting you know on his shirt that NASA has lied to us. Don't ever forget that. What's this? You can't tell anymore. <laughs> is this a robot or is this a bird? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Let me show you this. How about a, uh, how about a, a little bit of a, like, right? Or how about a, I don't see a difference. I think that the government's goal with bird drone 
Look at their eyebrows, man. Look at their forehead. It's big, tall, long forehead, brow bossing. You know, like the, the one thing they really can't do is make the forehead longer. The ma I mean, it's a male skull. When you look at it, there's a, a distinct jaw, like a man, a man's jaw. There's the eyebrows, we say brow bossing, but it means like they pop out. So the eyebrows are popping out. Now they can do surgery on that, but this is a real man. I mean, look at his head will fit to the right on the shoulder, one he head, and on the left, another whole head. A woman, it'll be about a half a head, like, you know, like the head will go and it, the shoulder will be closer, about halfway. So now that's why you'll never know when people are wearing suits, like Donald Trump wears suits all the time. But like there's videos on this channel that expose, you know, him when he's not wearing a suit and it's obvious that he's got a female body. But anyways, lots of stuff to, you know, discover here. The world we live in is crazy. I mean, this is how crazy it is. Okay, when I first heard this documentary, I'm thinking to myself, holy shit, you know, the government really did this. And then after a while, I'm like, no, dude, it's in the Bible. You know, birds are in the Bible and stuff. And so then I knew, because I had the scriptures. You know, if I didn't have the scriptures, my gosh, you, listen, if you don't know the word and you don't have the word, you don't believe in the word, man, I feel sorry for you because you're not really going to know the truth. I mean, this obviously you know is a joke. I mean, because, you know, it's, it's funny. These guys are hilarious. I love it. It's just, man, there's so many things in this world that you're going to learn on this channel that you're going to say, oh, my gosh. And then you're going to start saying, what else are they lying to us about? And then something like this documentary comes on and at first you're thinking, oh my gosh, the birds are drones. <laughs> and then if you don't have the word though, then you're going to be like, oh, okay. So I'm just letting you know, man, you know, God bless you. If you don't believe in the Bible, God real bless you. God real. Satan. This is similar to any other mass surveillance system. It's like the things that we learned from Edward Snowden back in 2013 about mass surveillance programs, data collection through your, your apps and your devices, I think it's all part of the same campaign. I think they, they got constant camera monitoring on us. If they have, you know, our location and our information from our devices, they also have eyes on us through the... Now listen, Edward Snowden, okay, I believe that Edward Snowden was a government shill, meaning he works for the government. Because here's the thing, in his word is the word snow, Snowden, Snowden. And so the word snow, we, in America we call it, you can Google this, it's called a snow job, a snow job. And that's like where they, they like scam, well, let's go look it up, snow job. Okay, a snow job, you go like this, this is how you do it, snow job. You really want to look up Urban Dictionary, okay? Because that's going to be like the real meaning of a snow job, okay? Regular dictionaries might give you a, a accurate, okay? But Urban Dictionary, these are real people putting in real definitions and people giving them a thumbs up whether or not it's accurate.
This is a secret of the used car market. But many people still don't know it. If your car has scratches or paint peeling, never go to an auto repair shop for through the birds it's it's all part of the same thing just keeping tabs i've actually started to do my own experiments about this there's all these ideas of like you know throwing them food and stuff right and i've realized i'm like well the thing is drones don't need to eat right but what do we know about information information is Hour. These birds, when you're throwing them food, they're collecting data. They're collecting data about the products you buy so they can sell your data to these other companies. This is classic big tech. Did you feed them Doritos? What kind? Cool Ranch, maybe? Was it this new Salsa Verde variety? They want to know. The birds are going to collect your samples and they tell Frito-Lay how you're living your life. That's what they're there for. That's why they pick up the food. If you grab your phone and you take a look at the camera on the back side of it, you may notice that it actually looks exactly like a bird's eye. Have you ever noticed that? Look at it. Looks exactly like the eye of a bird. The birds aren't real movement has gotten so big that the government has started to speak up about it. An actual government Twitter account posted this. Why would they say this unless they were hiding something? I was driving through a canyon one night and uh, you know, I was having some deep thoughts, philosophical things, and then this bird, this white drone, swooped right in my car. You know, people would say it was an owl, that's what they say. Totally interrupted my train of thought. The government doesn't want us to think, to philosophize. They don't want us to challenge the paradigms that they've put in place. That's when I knew that those kinds particularly were, were most dangerous. And so, yes, I see the birds that perch on the windowsill, I see the birds I'm walking throughout the day, but it's the birds that stop me from thinking for myself. The owls. So what happens when people try to expose the birds? There was once a British diplomat who found out what the government was hiding, so he jumped onto a plane to go to the UN to warn them, and this is what happened. Unfortunately, he never made it. Sometimes people ask me, what's the government's purpose in replacing all these birds with drones? It's a multifaceted issue here. First off, they want... to keep us in line and make sure that we're being good boys and girls. They also want to bolster the economy. It makes it a lot easier for them to create repair necessities by flying birds into waterways or into power lines and destroying things because, as we know, the government has a monopoly on utilities. They can control when they can boost up the